Alright, so hopefully this will work out. They're recording something upstairs and playing music in the room above us, but I did a test recording and it didn't show up, so hopefully it's all good. Let's do our best. <laughs> Indeed. So uh, this game was um, recommended to us by D. Marie Licka. Licha? L I C Licia. L I C E A. Uh, who tweeted it at us. So, and also made it. So, thank you. We're gonna take a look through. This looks like a lot of fun. Whoa! That, that rose oh, really went... This is very Utena. Oh the my graphic design here. Yeah. And I'm super into it. This is definitely very Utena. I am 100% into it. Although, I will point out that the rose is not rotating. <laughs> so, I don't know if it can be described as revolutionary. Get, 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 get it? Yes, I Revolutionary. Do. Okay. Okay, we have fun here. All right, preferences, tech speed, auto forward time, music volume, sound volume, display, full screen it. Yeah, let me just double check with OBS that that still works. It totally does. Sweet. All right. So All we are right. good there. Let's get in there. Uh, roll back slide. Uh, roll back side. Roll back side? I have no idea what that means. Let's get in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's. Let's, uh, let's get all up in this. All right. I'm ready to love some corpses. Author's note number one. This game contains mature and intense themes and is not recommended for players under 16 or those who are easily disturbed. An in-depth list, in list of content warnings is available. Uh, let's check it out. Just in case you're watching and, you know, you don't... Game contains, game contains themes of animal death, body horror, blood, homophobia, self-harm, suicide, self-hatred, and violence. All right. Please keep that in mind. Author's note number two, the monster knows you are here. It will do its best to make you leave. As such, the game will occasionally do startling and unexpected things. The monster knows you're here. It will do its best to make sure you leave. This is unrelated to the content of the following oh, game. <laughs> Just be alert. Just the IRL. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Y'all ready for this? All right. Let's do this. As far as anyone can tell, the Flores family had not committed any mortal sin. Only the immortal kind. The, no fairy complained of improper etiquette. Hold on. There we go. Little technical difficulty, don't worry about it. No witch reported anything missing from the garden. No one had been insulted, injured, or otherwise aggrieved. But that didn't stop a monster from showing up for their daughter one day. I love the art direction in this. It's so Utena. It is so Utena. Shadow puppetry. <laughs> I'm into it. Oh, when did the alien show up? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was quiet, painless, and swift. The monster left nothing but a mark on the girl and a promise to hang over her head. I will come back for this ring in several years. <laughs> 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 I will return for you one day, little miss. Until then, lead a noble life. Yep. She decided to become a prince herself. <laughs> was that such a good idea? Oh, <laughs> shit. What? Did you right click? You I right clicked. clicked. My bad. Yep. I will not take your life, nor will I harm your body. Oh. oh. But I will never leave you. I fucking love the abruptness there. <laughs> oh, that's real good. This game is... I'm already enjoying this super a lot. Alex. Do you want to be Alex? Sure. Dang, I got here just in time. It's really starting to come down hard. Oh, wait. Alex is the main character, so that means you'll be reading the whole thing. Are you cool with that? Uh... Or do you want me to do it? I don't know. Because if Alex is POV, that means it's going to have more of the reading. Uh, How about I do Alex? And okay. You can, okay. Just to save your throat. Okay. As I do my best to outrun the splatter of raindrops on the pavement, the familiar shock of pink walls emerges from behind the treetops. It feels a bit like being greeted by a friend. The Flores household is an old money house. I mean, it's clearly a money house, at least. Anyone could puzzle out that, pl that a place this size has to come with a serious price tag. It's really classy, too, with a porch and pillars and everything. Victorian, I think. Gothic revival? Look, I'm a witch, not a real estate agent. My point is it's a really nice house. Even though all the creepy death vines and the monster in the attic. It's just extra nice. It's Who wouldn't want those? <gasps> well, let's clock in. Not, not, not. Nice. The Flores family always has at least two household keep two housekeepers employed, but they've got a bad record via be keeping them around for long. As such, it's not a surprise to see an unfamiliar face open the door. Oh, thank God. You're the DeRosa girl, right? The assistant? Um... 
They told me about you. Where's the rich? Well, you are, uh, you're looking at her. The, uh, witch that I work with, she's my grandma, and she's, uh, preoccupied with other business today. So, this is my first solo job. The housekeeper's eye casually twitches. You're the witch. How old are you? 18? 19? Is that a problem? Listen, I've watched all seven seasons of Buffy, and I know I'm exactly old enough to handle this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. It's completely fine. Why on earth should I be worried? Just because I woke up to a real-life horror movie this morning. Just because half the house has been taken over by those horrible things. Just because I've been working in this house for a week, and out of nowhere a literal monster appeared and abducted my employer's daughter, and God knows what's happened to her, and God knows what'll happen to me. But no! <laughs> oh, that's a good face! That's a great okay. reaction face! Okay, it's fine. Why not send a child to help us? A child on her first solo job. Sure. Why not? Wouldn't want to break the streak we've got going on today. Man, Miss Sassafras, gift horse and mouth. After all, I just love suddenly being shunted to nightmare worlds where logic is gone and murderous vines have replaced it. I love hearing my superior respond to a rose whispered to me about dead animals with, oh, that's normal. I love terror. I love being in hell. Can't wait for Satan to jump up my ass and tap dance. <laughs> I swear to whatever god might still be up there, if one more thing happens under this roof, I'm going to... Betty. Andrea puts a hand on the woman's shoulder, and within an instant she's quiet and pale. Take a deep breath. <sighs> a monster. A literal monster. I thought everyone was being sarcastic. I know, hon. Why don't you go do sit down for a little while? This was just supposed to be extra money for the boat. The boat? Betty staggers like a fawn over to a nearby chair. After a moment, she drops into it bonelessly. I hear a faint noise like the boat drift down the hall. The boat. The boat. Am I? Am I the? Am I the voice of the entire maid brigade? Is that me? Yes, you're the maid of yeah. brigade. Yeah. Wait. <coughs> which one? Is that me? Yeah. Hey. Sorry about, um, all that. Hey, hey, don't sweat it. I love being casually insulted to my face. I love it when people don't take me seriously because of my age. It's super, is everyone, like, super sarcastic? Yes. I love it. Just like IRL. Nice. Be nice. She's a newbie. Thought all the talk about the Flores monster was just a joke, huh? She's not the first. Andrea is the one housekeeper who stuck around the Flores family the longest, so all of this is old hat to her. She's probably more annoyed by Betty's theatrics than the monster kidnapping her ward, but she's also too soft-hearted to tell the other woman to get a grip. I guess in a way, we're co-workers. But more than anything, we're friends. Aww. So, how have you been? Oh, you know. Same as usual. Exhausted. Aren't we all? So, what, we're looking at a typical case, or...? Vimes have taken over the attic and second floor completely. The most affected areas were all the usual ones. Office, bathroom, reading room, her bedroom, too. The Mr. and Mrs.? Gone since Monday. They're on a trip to South Padre. We haven't, uh, actually told them yet. And Marisol and you-know-who, they're in the usual place? Yeah. Righto. Well, if that's everything, I think I'll get to work. <laughs> no point off putting it up. No point in putting it off any longer. You're sure you'll be okay on your own? Here I go again on my own. Andrew, remember what I said literally two minutes ago about people not taking me seriously? Alex, it's not about your age. It'll be your first time doing this alone. And you know how those roses can get. They just keep showing up everywhere and rotating in the side of the screen. Yeah. I don't get it. At showing up over important objects in the foreground, <laughs> sometimes in different colors that may or may not have symbolic meaning. It's... I don't get it. <laughs> All right, that's our last one. I promise. False. <laughs> you know how, you know how the monster can get. 
It's, yeah, it's a little nerve-wracking, but Marisol is my friend. And who's going to help her if it's not me? Why does it keep changing back and forth between Alex and Alejandra de Rosa? Um, probably because she has Alex as a nickname. I don't know why for interface reasons it would zip back and forth, but why the heck not? Why the heck not? Go ahead. I mean, there are other witches in the area. No. I want to do this. For every princess captured by a ferocious beast, there's got to be a dashing knight, you know? Yep. It's Utena. It's fucking... I am so Ugh. into this. All right, go get Anthe. But then it turns out it's really about Anthe escaping on her own. <laughs> Alex is the vehicle through which Marisol escaped. <laughs> Dashing night? What happened to being a witch? You should see me turn into a car. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we're going to do this the entire time, aren't we? We are. I'm a woman of many talents. Ah! It, it, under the door. You follow her pointer finger to the fallen, fall end of the hall. That's what I just said. The far end of the hall, at the door that leads to the staircase. This hallway is the unofficial safe zone of the house. The Rosa never come in here, at least. Me and Lella have always arrived before they started invading. But now, it slinks and twitches its way across the floor. The petals begin to fan out. Do something. Stay back. Quick flip of latches, I open my briefcase. Let those trimmers fit comfortably in the palm of my hand. All right, let's trim some bush. <laughs> and abruptly, it's face to face with me. Whoa. And the rose, as roses tend to, opens its mouth. I Whoa! don't think roses tend to do that. Oh my god. I don't think roses oh, tend to. This is not what George O'Keefe promised me. <laughs> Yes, you can be the monster. Yeah. You have to use a cool monster voice, though. I don't have a cool monster voice. Okay, try anyway. Okay. Another day, another corpse waiting to happen. You've come here so many times, swaggering in the face of death. Should one applaud your bravado or your brainlessness? <sighs> For your information. But now you walk in here alone, a girl turned a young lady before all our eyes. Surely you know it'll only get harder from here on out. This is your warning. You should leave this place and never look back. No! I'm a true prince and I'm not leaving <laughs> until I help Marisol. And not until I get rid of you. What, that's it? You don't want to do more of this? I thought you loved your formula. Why do you suddenly want to skip all the foreplay? Oh. Am I Marisol also? Probably, yeah. Alex. I pause. What? Why is she talking through the rose? Did it eat her? No, it's not. It's letting her talk. It does this all the time. Marisol, listen, just hang tight. We'll be heading up pretty soon. Alejandra, listen to me. Do not come up here. Tell Andrea that she and the other one are fired. I want you all to get out of this house right now and never come back. Mary, I don't know why it's making you say this, but... It's not making me say anything, Alex. I'm telling you, of my own free will, to go. Mirazol, you know I have to. No, you don't. I'm telling you. I'm giving you permission to leave. Do you really think I'm just going to let you die? The hall is silent. Mirazol, do you know what I'll have... You know what'll happen if it stays too long. Leaving you like that is just as good as killing you. The petals of the rose gently retract and expand. It almost looks like a beating heart. Fine by me. Snick. Takes barely a flick of my wrist to drop the tendril on the floor. The rose's teeth are na still now hidden under its petals. I lift it up gently and place it in my briefcase. The rest of the vine is already dissolving into ash. <clears throat> the door opens without resistance. In the living room the kitchen, I can see a couple of wayward vines have started to creep in, but none with roses. They'll dissolve on their own once the monster leaves. I have bigger problems to worry about upstairs. Holler if you need anything. Whiskey. Nina. <laughs> for, for God's sake, be careful. The stairs creak familiarly under my feet. 
You should have listened to her. The voice is familiar, too. It never stops being unnerving, hearing it come out of multiple throats. What is it about you and the world to know, little witch? You realize you don't have your grandmother's shadow to hide in anymore, don't you? That was probably the one kindness that girl has ever given you, and you threw it away. I think that's the only time Marisol's been nice to me. For a guy who's been bugging a girl her entire life, you don't know a damn thing about her. His voice goes silent a moment. You probably think that sassing it would just be asking it for trouble, but believe it or not, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're all sarcastic. It's a survival tactic. I love it. That's so good. Horrible sanity-rending monster invades your house? Just sass it. I, I mean, that makes total sense. <laughs> Why do you think half the cast of Buffy is so fucking, like, removed all the time and ironic, right? <laughs> oh, that's why Oz was the best of them. <laughs> it's the most... Okay, I'm done with Buffy. Back to Utena. <gasps> yep. <laughs> there won't be anything standing between us when you come to the attic. My thorns will open your pretty skin and leave you nothing but a heap of twitching flesh. You'll feel the agony of a thousand deaths before you even die. Cool. Hey, uh, hold still. I clip roses as I ascend the staircase, catching each one and depositing them into my briefcase. But the last one makes me pause at the top of the staircase. What's this you've got in your teeth? It's a page of notebook paper, wrinkled and crisp from age and numerous folding. It's familiar. Oh. Oh, take a picture. Oh. Take oh. a picture. Oh. Okay. Okay. Because I have a okay. feeling this is going to be important. Okay. okay. Yeah, they're color-coded. This is Utena. <sighs> pink, affection, dark pink, gratitude, blue, an impossible dream. Yellow, friendship, jealousy, too many is dangerous. Red, passion, anger. You took a picture of us. I did. It was good. <laughs> Black is death. Lavendar <laughs> is love at first sight. White, danger, never listen. Ah. Nah, so much for the selfie. <laughs> no, there was already a good one. Oh, jeez, where'd you find this? <clears throat> my nervous handwriting, a ghost of a hand, scribbling in a frantic attempt to keep up with my grandmother's instructions. My frankly embarrassing attempt at spelling lavender. When I was 13, I thought confronting Marisol's monster would be my greatest accomplishment as a witch. I wasn't actually sure we'd make it back alive, despite Lela's constant reassurances. I wonder what my younger self would think of me now, having climbed these stairs more times than I can count. My greatest accomplishment now a regular house visit. You don't have that woman with you anymore. It wouldn't be sporting if I didn't allow you extra help. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I sent the rose with a little more force than necessary. So, uh, the attic, huh? The attic has a pull-down staircase. It's currently covered with vines, but those are actually the least of my worries right now. The hatch has three locks. The hatch has locks. Three, to be precise. They all look pretty secure. Hey, bucko. Where are the keys? Doesn't reply, and six years of doing this has never once given us the keys when we ask. Somehow it's just become routine, and routine has historically been pretty comforting. But what if this was the time? They're just like, oh, fine. <laughs> but the routine typically falls with the monster explaining where the keys are, a grandiose villain speech as if we haven't heard it a thousand times. Today it's silent. Not even evil chuckle. You're different today. For a monster, you're seriously losing your bite. It says nothing. But I'll always say that if there's one thing monsters love, it's their formula. So I must come back and hide in the attic with Marisol while we always go through the same lines. Dastardly fiend, let that poor girl go! Ha ha ha, as if I would. You witches are so pathetic, I'll toy with you some more. Let's play a little game if you can find the three kids hidden somewhere on this floor. Something, something, time limit, clues, whatever. Now all of a sudden you're go too bored to go through with it? I don't see what's the point of going to save a beautiful princess if we don't get to be a little dramatic about it. Uh, I'm tired today, okay? <laughs> I'm just giving it all I can, alright? <laughs> <sighs> you can't save her. Fine, whatever. I need to clean up the roses in the other rooms anyways. Play your doofy little game like always. Do some gardening like always. And I'll be back with the keys before you can say Citizen Kane. Which? His voice comes from behind the attic door. I'll warn you one more time. This is your final chance to turn back. I shrug and start towards the reading room. Oh, time to read. Nice! Oh, Crap. Hmm. It's nothing but Ayn Rand. Oh. First editions. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, wait. No, hold on. There's one. Uh, oh, oh, that's Jordan Peterson. Oh. Damn it. Oh. Chaos Dragon of Femininity. 
Oh my god. Remember when I had some like 14 year old kid come in with his mom and he was like, yeah, I'm looking for the new Jordan Peterson book. And his mother was like being all supportive and I'm like, my guy, <laughs> my guy, you don't know what you're doing, man. I follow the vines in the scent of roses. It's a nice smell, but it has a tendency to become cloying the more time passes. Lola used to get headaches sometimes, but weirdly enough, I seem to be able to endure it better than her. I first off to the reading room. I just said it was one of the most effective places and sure enough, I see quite a lot of bit of roses. Let's see, roses first, then we'll get to looking for those keys. It's nice to have a reading room, I think. I just kind of envied Marisol for it, even though I usually only ever could see it when it's being choked with vines. I'm trying to run my finger down one as I look around the room. It's warm to the touch. All right, who's up first? Snip, snip. <laughs> There's oh. a tall bookcase packed to the brim with books of all kinds. On the topmost shelf sprouts a single red rose. What's red mean? Hmm. Red means... Um... Um, 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 passion, crossed out, anger, question mark? Uh-huh. Well, so the description of the game on the itch page said that uh, we might have to listen to the roses in order to solve puzzles and shit. Well, so let's listen. Let's give it a listen. So this one's passion and or anger. Oh. The pigeon crushed paper thin on the road, wings somehow spared, still spread, straining slack, dead. They reach for the sun, a pop-up book from hell. Looking at roadkill is like getting a fish hook pushed into my heart. Sad in a way I can't put into words. Snip, snap. I cut wait, loose. Wait, wait, wait. What? We need to get the scissors. <sighs> Hold on. The level of dedication to the Foley work right now is ridiculous. Yep. All right. Welcome back, Foley artist. From the top. I cut it loose. On the shelf right below it, the hooks are slightly askew, as if one of their number is missing. Um, mm. From gaps sprouts a single lavender rose. Love at first sight. Interesting. Let's listen. Let's listen. The witch had come to battle me many times before, but this was the first time she brought a partner. The girl with a fluffy head and a permanent smile, no older than my ward. She was frightened to see my face. I could tell that much from her tiny fingers clutching her notebook tight. But even as her grin went tight with false bravado, I could see the pride in her gaze, watching her grandmother get to work. And as I retreated, I threw one last glance over my shoulder. My name is Alex. I'm here to save you. I memorized her face and name, knowing she would one day become my enemy too. I lined her features in my mind with animosity. And yet, somehow, it also felt like fondness. Oh... I cut it loose. It's a comfortable armchair begging someone to curl up in it. From the seat sprouts a single yellow rose. Which one's yellow? Friendship, comma, jealousy. Too many is dangerous. Curvy era. Okay, too many is dangerous. So why don't we listen to one, see what it's like, and then we won't listen to others. Okay. She loved reading. She still loves reading. The beautiful words, the beautiful worlds. It would make her forget for just a little while the curse that hung over her head like a sword. You read so much, said the little witch. Why don't you tell me about the stuff you read? She shook her head, her clumsy tongue faulting, failing, tripping over syllables and second thoughts. It would be a mockery to the lovingly crafted books. Well, then how am I supposed to know why you like them so much? Because they make me forget how much I can't do. They make me forget the person I am in this world. Hmm. That's so silly, the little witch doubled over in laughter. You can do anything as long as you work hard and believe in yourself. It's believe hard for me, too. Believe in yourself. That's your magic. <laughs> This is a Little Witch Academia now. It's hard for me, too, but I just had to give it a try. I'm sure you could go to school and be happy and normal if you just tried a little harder. Because it's that easy. Ah, damn it. Because it's that easy. Oh, good. Depression again. Mm. Because she had never, ever once thought of that before. Because if it's so easy for you, I can do it, too, even though you're so much better than me and everyone except you can see it. That moment, she wished she had never met the Little Witch. Mm. Shit. Is, 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 like, the whole vine secretly, like, a fucking metaphor for her own depression? I don't know. I suppose we'll find out. I cut it loose. Just a stack of books on the floor by the armchair's feet. It seemed to be from a series about animals aimed towards younger readers. <laughs> it's always <laughs> fucking animorphs. It's animorphs. It's always animorphs. Unless it's Redwall. Unless it's Redwall. It could be Redwall. I don't know. To the Moon made me think that it's always going to be ra ra animorphs. <laughs> from the top most one spreads a single blue rose. An impossible dream. An impossible dream. All right. I once read a book about birds. 
It's a chapter all about cuckoos. If you attacked one, the entire swarm came <laughs> in and started attacking you at once. It was a really easy way to lose all your heart containers. Cuckoos, the most said, are gangsters of the animal kingdom. They look for magpies who have recently just laid eggs, take an egg out of the nest, and replace it with one of their own. The magpies are forced to take care of the cuckoo chick, which eats far more than the rest of the chicks combined, so much so that the other chicks simply starve to death. The book depicted the cuckoo chick as a grotesque monster, half of its body taken up by an eternally gaping mouth, screaming at the poor magpies. I hated that picture. I used to think cuckoo chicks were the most evil and despicable creatures on earth. But how was it the chick's fault? Never asked to be laid in a nest too small for it. Never asked to have a voice that cried louder and longer than its brethren. It's dropped into a world that it never expected to exist, but instead of trying to make its nest bigger or giving its parents enough food for all the chicks, everyone just blamed it for having a body that couldn't fit into the nest it never asked for. Is this trans now? God. Why couldn't you have just made me a magpie? Trans subtext! I, and, and, and slowly the vines begin to dissolve. Some begin to creep away, retreating towards the attic door, and eventually the room is free of roses. Woo! Oof. Okay, I guess that's everything. But I wonder- Oh, son of a gun! Were any of those keys in here? I, I've got- uh, Listen, my setup's a little weird, okay? Forgive me. Are any of those keys in here? So I scan the room with my eyes and notice a couple of books left lying on the side table. A dictionary and a bird watcher's field guide. A book of words and a book of birds. I feel like the universe is telling me something important. Bird is the word! That's what. Should I look at one of these books? Interesting. Uh, let's follow the magpie thought. Yes, let's 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 watch the. Is there any bird I should look up? Magpie. Birds. I feel like I'm forgetting something important about birds. Yeah, I saw a picture with the, of a crow with a tiny top hat last night. Have to remember <laughs> to save it to my animals wearing people clothes file when I get home. <laughs> Anyways, where's that key? Should I look at one of these books? What if we look up cuckoos? Any bird I should look up? More like cuckoo. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. Huh. Is it the dictionary? Leaf through the pages, Ant. My vocabulary feels so expanded, but seriously, I should focus on finding that key. So it is the bird watcher's field guide. Uh, do I have to lowercase it? Is it not like the uppercase? Yes. It doesn't like the uppercase. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I feel the lump of metal before I see it. A familiar bronze key is taped to the page right on top of the entry for Magpie. Yum. Pop. One out of three keys found. Hell Snip, yeah. Snip, snap. Snip. Snap. <laughs> Do it again. I love it. Feels like the very air of the house shudders. Out of the corner of my eye, I think I see some vines undulating, but nothing happens. Getting a better look at it. Stop it. I'm undulating. I'm the monster, okay? I gotta get into the role. This is method acting. <laughs> Methodist <laughs> acting, even. <laughs> Methodist acting. Is that where I pretended to be Methodist when I went to church for all those years? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Getting a better look at the cluster of vines by the wall, I noticed that a lot of them are feeding into a door right off the reading room. Cool. Mr. Flora's office. That was another room Andrea mentioned, right? I don't really remember what Mr. Flores does, but... A specific doctor of some sort has a title with a really long, complicated name. There's no syringes or anything in his office, though. It's mostly papers and files. It must be a complicated job. There's some paintings on the wall, but they're mostly covered in vines right now. But in a smaller place, the smell of roses is growing overpowering. I gotta get going. There are three paintings on the wall, and the white space between them sprouts a pink rose. All right, pink is affection. All right. I don't. We don't seem to be encountering any kind of downsides from listening to them yet. That's true. So I, I think we should keep listening. Yeah. I returned to her on a great December afternoon when the air was cold and biting. I enjoy the winter, the days of cloud-quilted skies and no sun. Time was passing and her skin grew colder and colder. Would today be the day? But then all of a sudden the room was warm. I told you we'd be back. She didn't know what to say after I was banished. But the little witch took her hand. She led her downstairs, and her grandmother fixed them a drink, thick and creamy flavored with cinnamon, horchata. It warmed her stomach. The little witch had asked her about the things she liked. She listened to her like she was the most fascinating person in the world. She told her about school and monsters and learning to be a witch. And it warmed her chest. Somewhere in another room, her parents and the little witch's grandmother were talking in slow, solemn voices. But at that moment, the world was just her kitchen. The kitchen and the little witch and their warm drinks in the pale white sky outside. I 
cut it loose. There's a desk covered in scattered papers. A small book sits on the desk, and the cover sprouts a single red rose. Let's listen. I forgot what red means. That is but, anger? Uh, passion. Crossed out. Anger? Question mark? The kitten's ribcage opened like a present on Bull Street. The head was perfectly intact and perfectly cute. Some Claude's priests had turned everything from the neck down into a nightmare. Is it arrogant to think that people look at me the same way? An adorable tragedy. Every time Mom brings me somewhere, her friends just smile at me like someone in the family just died. It's the most infuriating thing. I feel better if people are actually honest about how disgusting it was to look at me. I cut it loose. I like the notion of like taking all these like really like intense emotions and snipping them off. You deal with them nice and neatly. You know Put what I mean? Put them in a Yeah, exa exactly. Like, not letting them subsume you, but kind of like just dealing with them one at a time. Okay, well, time to listen. Yep. Time to snip. <laughs> On the desk sits a computer. I bet it's a Mac. From the keyboard sprouts a single blue rose. Let's listen to The Impossible Dream. To dream the impossible dream. <laughs> no, no Don Quixote. <laughs> Do you know what I see when I look at you? I see a recluse. I'm sorry. The only time you leave your room is when you go to school and you certainly aren't making any friends there. I'm sorry. I know your condition is hard to deal with, but God, if you could just try. Oh, good. This is the depression shaming one. Mm. Great. I am trying. Why won't you say anything? Why do you hate me that much? I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. People are talking. They probably think we mistreat you. Why can't you ever think about how this affects us? I'm sorry. Marisol, God, don't cry. I'm only telling you this because we want to help you. We don't know how you're feeling. We only know what we see. My eyes, you're the loneliest person I've ever known. In my eye, that's the best thing I could be. I cut it loose. Man, depression is a fucker. There's a tall file cabinet. From the handle at the top drawer, it sparks a single yellow rose. Do we risk it? We listen. I used to like it when you told me about your studies. It's all so interesting. You always blush saying your magic wasn't as cool as the stuff I read about in books. But of course it was. Magic was magic. Your magic would only get more powerful when you got older. You were always ready, so... You were already so amazing. By the time you'd become an actual witch, I understood. You have so much talent. You're so amazing. You're going to become a wonderful witch. I'm not even sure when I'm going to be alive in a few years. Maybe a monster will catch me off guard in a year and kill me. Maybe next week. Maybe tomorrow. You have a future. You have a curse. As a braver, I could have just told you I didn't want to hear about that stuff anymore. But I didn't. Bitterness was so much easier. I'm sorry, Alex. A supportive friend is all I can be, and I'm not even good at that. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Okay, this is a depression analog, right? We're, I don't know. Uh, I can't tell whether it's whether it's a uh, depression allegory or a uh, disability allegory or oh. trans allegory yet. You're... There's stuff that there's stuff in here that could play into any number of angles. I think. So. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There was this retreat. Two rooms down. Good job, me. See if there's any keys in here. There's a number of places it could be in here, but for some reason I feel like looking at the paintings. I also remember a suspicious book behind Mr. Flores' desk. What should I look at now? Let's look at the paintings. Has three paintings in his office. There's a painting of a woman lying in a river, a painting of a wheat field, and a portrait he commissioned of Marisol. Which one should I look at? I don't know. I'm not I... sure where to go from this one. What if we rethink our actions? What if we look at the book? <laughs> look at the book? The key was in a book last time. Maybe that's the theme for today? Look closer at the book. It says, What to do when your child breaks your heart? It looks like it's dog-eared. Oof. Ouch! Alright, alright. Let's check out a look at the paintings. Uh, let's look at the one of Ophelia <laughs> there uh, in uh, Lake Nap Time. <laughs> the girl in the river. It's an oil painting. The girl is surrounded by flowers, and her palms float to the surface in little cups. Little plastic red solo cups. I don't know why they're separate from the rest of her hands, but they are nicely contained. It seems dreamlike and peaceful, but I feel uneasy for some reason. Is there something off about this painting? This one's gonna be harder. For... Oh, there's gotta have been a clue in one of those. Did you? Was there anything that? Hmm seems unusual um her face i your, don't know your face because they kept talking about 
um, mm -hmm. how they can't tell what she's thinking. All they can see is what she's giving them. Sure, let's look at her face. Too familiar. I don't like it. Flowers? It's rosemary. That's for remembrance. There's pansies. That's for thoughts. M for murder. And waiting for Godot. <laughs> Billy Crystal. I'm self-joking plus nervous just equals bad jokes. Huh. How about her hands? Okay. Something really off-putting about her hands. They seem lifeless. Huh. Okay. I would have thought being a critic was such hard work. Well, let's look at a different painting. Let's look at painting of the wheat field. Sounds good. It's a vast yellow field under a dark blue sky. A murder of clothes, fra cro clothes, crows flies overhead. The texture of the paint is interesting. It makes it feel like the painting, like it's moving before my eyes, but somehow it feels ominous. Ooh, they mentioned murder in the painting over there. They mentioned murder indeed. So let's take a look at the crows. 40, 41, 42. <laughs> <laughs> Not the biggest fan oh, of Cat Crows, but they no. produce some pretty good numbers. Oh, puns. I love it. There isn't even anyone here, and I feel like I should apologize for that one. Look at the sky. The sky looks like it's getting real dark real fast. Looks like a bad omen. Or rain. It could be rain. What about the wheat? The wheat. Is it wheat? I thought it might be corn. It looks really tall. If you laid down on it, nobody would be able to see you. And then if one of those big threshers came... Uh, anyways. If one of those super badass pyro threshers came. Oh no, not the super badass pyro threshers. <laughs> I guess let's look at Marisol. Is that how you pronounce that name? Am I fucking it up that badly? I am uncertain. It's a portrait commissioned for Marisol's 18th birthday. It's a weird, kind of a weird style compared to the other paintings, but I think the artist captured Marisol, captured Marisol's hair. Her eyes, rather. Her eyes stares directly out at the viewer. I always did think her gaze was intense. Something off about this painting? Her... Let's check out her eye. eye. It's an eye, and yep, just an ordinary old eye. Wait, her eye stares right at the viewer. Or at the wall opposite the painting. <laughs> hey, there's something on the wall opposite the painting. Oh. <laughs> it's just yeah. literally taped to the wall. We could have turned around and found it at any time, but we didn't. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe I ever looked that. It would have been so embarrassing if I just missed that one. The bathroom is pitch black when I arrive. Vines are leading into it, but I don't smell roses. It's not something like neat. That a light. is bad. Alright. Well then. That's pleasant. I don't like this. Oh my god. Well. Okay, this is giving me like volume one of Fables vibes here. Well, let's see what's up here. Woof. Well, gang, I must say, I'm not a fan of anything that's happening in this room. But cleaning the bathroom is always the worst chore, am I right? <laughs> Tough crowd. What, do Rosa not have a sense of humor? Oh, we have great senses of humor. You just aren't very funny. Yeah, fuck off. Okay, great, awesome. Let's just get to it. And the head of the corpse sprouts a single red rose. That one was passion, passion crossed anger. out anger. Do you want to do rose voice? Since they seem to be the monster. Uh, or do you want me to keep doing rose voice? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I liked going on walks with my parents. It was some of the better times. In summer where we would, could see the yellow flicker of fireflies in the evenings. The autumn when the sky was pale and the air was cool. Those walks made me feel like I was a normal person. I don't want you wearing those shorts. What? They're so long. Of course I knew that. I liked them because they were long. As far back as I can remember, I hated my big, thick thighs. It was such a relief when I saw that the gym shorts they gave us at school fell almost to my knee. I really shouldn't be wearing shorts like those. It doesn't matter that they're long. You're a young lady. Mom, what are you talking about? I make you look like a woman who likes other women. Oh. Okay. Walked back into my room and dug out the tiniest, most awkward pair of shorts I owned. I hadn't worn them since last year. For every second of every minute of that walk, I felt my legs being squeezed like meat. But at least I didn't look like a woman who likes other women. I only go on walks by myself now. I cut it loose. The toilet seat is covered by patchwork of vines. From the middle of the brambles sprouts a single yellow rose. Oof. 
Uh, yellow was... Yellow was the dangerous and too many. Oh, but... friendship, jealousy, too many is dangerous. Well, whatever. I ate my yellow this morning. How about yep. you? You, with your soft, fluffy hair. That's us. You, with your cute little cartoon character eyes. That's us. You, with your long, slender legs and your curvy chest and your perfect, sleek little waist. You turned to me and said, Do I look fat in this? Alex, I love you, but sometimes I swear I could just smack you. That does it. I throw my shears down on the floor. If it's so damn awful being my friend, then I'll save you the fucking trouble. Betty and Andrea's questions blur into a meaningless noise as I storm past them. Make sure to slam the door behind me as hard as I can. I start the long walk home and raindrops begin to pepper my head. I try to ignore the tears. I don't look back once. What? Too many. Bad ass? Yeah, too many. We did too many. Okay. Uh, does a... Oh, shit. Uh, did, we should have save. saved, and we didn't. Okay. All right, uh, speed oh, wait, does it, does, it, does it quick save or auto save? It does not. Okay. okay. BRB. BRB. Let's All right, welcome listen back. to this one. No, we, we, we don't need to. We already heard it. Right oh, before, we did. Let's we not heard listen it to right this before one, we, yeah, You're so, right, because we listened to that one, and then we peace. So let's prune that. Yeah, so let's that. prune the shit out of that, and now we know better. Three is too many. Snip, 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 snip. You already got it off. I don't care. I like that being a witch is almost entirely about going gardening. <laughs> snip, snip. I'm top of the toilet tanks. It's a razor. From the razor sprouts a single black rose. I don't think Death. Can... Death. Ooh, I want to listen. At 15 years old, I realize I hate shaving. My razor uses too many blades. Three blades for smooth skin and a close cut. We throw in an extra blade free. What if we drop a save somewhere very soon? Close cut. Two blades too close. After the scene, we walk. Okay. Be so easy. Coward. Say you want it. You have all you need. Coward. A pair of slashed wrists for the price of one, small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Special packaging for easier storage. I need a coward and attention whore. Pig, how are you going out looking like that? How dare you force them to look at you? Your legs, your arms, your stomach. Coward. Just looking at you makes me sick. Coward. Just looking at you makes me sick. Coward. Just looking at you makes me... You make me sick. You make me sick. You make me... I read it in a book. They check the wrists. They won't check the inner thighs. Oof. Only half a coward know. Only half a coward know for half the price. <laughs> I, the rose. The mirror is cracked. <laughs> From the center of the crack sprouts a single dark pink rose. Did we... Oh. Oh, s sorry. Uh, let's listen then. No, I meant like the end of the bathroom scene. We'll drop the save. Okay, I was worried that what if something else in here makes us lose? Uh... Eh. One day before I left, I waited at the window. I saw the little witch part her trembling shoulder. Pat her trembling shoulder. It's okay now. The witch smoothed the hair out of her face and... For a moment, she felt her fingers between the yellow locks. She left her fingers. It's really she pretty. just left them there. She just left them there. Yeah. They're detachable. <laughs> Whatever. Detachable fingers. Hush. <laughs> she lifted her head. Huh? Your hair's so pretty. It's like gold. It's like you've got supermodel hair, you know? She stared at the little witch. She who had spent so much time looking into mirrors. She with ghostly patchwork scars between her legs. She stared at the little witch. <laughs> Why are you crying? Even though I took care of all the roses, the vines are still strewn around the room. God, fine, okay. I know where the freaking key is. Oof. Ugh. I like that it gives you three options for it. It's not a corpse. It's hamburger meat, obviously. A wake a shirt and creativity and posing. Monster's done this bit a bit million times and it stopped scaring me years ago. Well, good thing I brought gloves. I <laughs> sure do love being a witch, gang. I know you really all have my briefcase now, but I suddenly feel like talking really loudly, totally unrelated to any meat sounds that might not be happening. My hand closed around something, but it doesn't feel like a key at all. This is... Uh... Okay, what's that say? Based on Marisol's descriptions of her more irritable episodes, I am now almost positive her previous diagnosis was inaccurate, or at the least only partially correct. Combined episodes of depression and hypomania most likely point specifically to bipolar 2 disorder. 
Proper treatment for patients with bipolar 2 is of the utmost importance. Furthermore, bipolar disorder is a condition that can heavily exacerbate ocular rosaceae, probably. Uh, besides restarting regular therapy sessions, getting prescription of mood stabilizers as soon, something, something will be vital. I am going to recommend something colleague of mine. Huh. Okay. So. So let's unpack that. Yeah. What the heck is ocular rosa rosa Presumably some sort of ophthalmological disease or problem mm -hmm. or syndrome of some manner that we shall probably learn more about momentarily. Probably. And you were right on the depression angle. A. A. I, like, I mean, we've already come to this conclusion, right? Every VN or Twine game we play, it's got to be about depression or be about gay or both. Yep. Son of a gun, you actually managed to do something unexpected after all these years. The vines creak as they retract from the bathroom, and somehow it sounds more like laughter than anything. The key isn't here. There's only one more room it could be in. God, I hope nobody's expecting me to clean this up. Her room is a bit smaller than what you might expect, and surprisingly plain as at first glance. A desk, a bed, a closet, two small bookshelves. The windows are cracked open, letting in the faint melody of raindrops and the scent of warm earth. It mingles nicely with the smell of roses. Marisol's bookshelf is packed tight with books. The high shelf sprouts a single black rose. Drop that save. Gonna drop yes. that save. Okay. Let's do this. Let's listen. The baby won't stop crying. The baby won't stop crying. The baby won't stop crying. The baby. The baby! <laughs> your sister only visits a few times a year, and you honestly can't spend a little more time out of your room. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get away from the noise a little. Why won't it stop crying? Why won't it shut up? What are black roses again? Dad. For God's sakes, Marisol, it's a baby. You don't think you were the same way? That's literally not the point at all. How can you not see the point? Fine, I guess I can't do anything if you want to be selfish. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone! Do you think bad people have a responsibility to protect other people from themselves? Oof. No. Honestly, I think so. I can't fix myself. No one can. Not even Don Donia de Rosa, presumably. Not even Alex. Not even magic can help me. If I stay away from people as much as I can, I won't be able to hurt them. It's probably better this way. Alex, I'm sorry. The monster laughed above my head. I cut the rose. Ooh. Her closet door is slightly ajar. From the doorknob sprouts a single white rose. So it says not to listen to these, but I need to know what happens. All right, well, we dropped a hot save, didn't we? <laughs> you, we sure did. Uh -oh. The white rose parts its lips, and in the silkiest, most honey-sweet voice I've ever heard, it sings. Some... Go ahead. What? Oh, Go ahead. no. Sometimes I just hate you. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is dropping her shears. So it's probably not going to be a j sound. It'll be like Alejandra. Alejandra? The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is staggering in place as if her legs cannot bear the weight of the words she has just heard. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is barreling out of the room. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running down the stairs. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is barging out of the house. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running the cold chill of the rain like needles on her skin. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is... Renpy crashed? Uh-oh. Renpy crashed! We got a bad ending so bad that it crashed the game. <laughs> All right. Give Let's... us a hot second here. Um, wow. That is... Wow. I mean... I, I mean, clearly now... The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is no longer running. She just is. Well, well, well no, she's not running anymore. She, she stopped running. Yeah. The program. The program stopped, stopped running. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Okay, let's load right. that save let that me totally sure, didn't get corrupted. Let me just double check OBS is um, still recording this. It's not. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, we're back. Well, yeah. Okay, let's not listen to that let's one. Let's never listen to White Rose. We should have maybe listened uh, to ourselves when we decided to not 
I assumed it would be an unreliable narrator thing and that we'd have to listen to things that it, we didn't originally think we'd need to. Fair enough. Well, anyway, let's snip snip. Yeah, oh, pfft, I almost clicked you almost first. did. Prune the rose. White roses are emblems of purity. That's why they're so dangerous. Lalo told me once that humans have n no completely pure emotions. We're strange and jumbled creatures whose feelings are always shifting, being mixed and muddled with other feelings. That's why we sometimes say terrible things in a moment of anger, and that instant your heart is tricked into thinking the anger is all that's ever been. But even if you hurt someone with your words, you can always have the chance to apologize. You can explain yourself and do your best to fix the damage. But a white rose. A white rose takes your words and makes them pure. Oof! Pulls out all your tangled feelings and reasons and warps your statement into a truly pure, untainted emotion. Makes your words turn to blades that strike straight to the heart. Turns them into words that can never, ever be taken. Why are you playing with those scissors? Like, I'm legit worried you're going to stab yourself with them. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. No, oh my god. A statement of pure despair, a statement of true anger, a statement of true hatred. Many people have taken their lives listening to the words of a, bright, of a white rose. I take the flower and gently place it in my briefcase. There's a dip in the mattress. It's big enough for a body. It's still warm. It centers a pink rose. What was it? You're being all quiet. Is something wrong? Marisol, what, what, do I have something on my face? What's up my hair, man? Why did you come today? Oh, you said you were wanted to go to the movies today, right? But that was before yesterday when you... What, because of the monster? Marisol, it's going to take more than that to... Alex, I yelled at you. I called your grandmother a... Mary, you kept your mouth in a placid smile, but your gaze was firm. Marisol, listen, it's okay. You are stressed yesterday and you said some things you didn't mean. It happens to the best of us. Not to you. Lella already forgave you. Look, honestly, I think she was thought it was kind of funny. So it's all okay, okay? You don't have to beat yourself over it. I think it's getting worse. The monster? No, I'm... It's m making me worse. Like, angry or meaner. I don't know. I'm getting scared of myself. <laughs> All right. Relatable territory now. <sighs> Alex, Art... Oh my gosh, Marisol, you're really gonna ask if I'm scared of you? Marisol. Marisol. I'm literally a witch. Witch in training. Whatever! <laughs> my point is, if anything, you should be scared of me. I'm extremely spooky scary. <laughs> you know, there's rumors about me and my grandma around town, right? They think we sacrificed cats to the devil and used bone magic. The hell's bone magic? I wish any of my magic was half as metal as that. <laughs> I laugh. So you're saying I should listen to rumors? Absolutely, I love Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that one was the one that broke me. <laughs> I'm super creepy and weird, according to them. Managed to laugh again. You're the furthest thing from creepy. You're so cool and brave. God, like you aren't brave with all that you go through? It's not bravery. Not a moment of that is bravery. Nope, sorry, I'm declaring it a fact right now. No, come on. Tension World, Marisol Flores is officially super brave. It is approximately good trait number a billion of her many good traits. Approximately. Approximately. Oh my God, literally what good traits? Wait, no, oh my God, don't answer that. Marisol Flores is A, super brave, B, super smart, C, a great listener, Lord. D, says really interesting things, E, smells like flowers, F, okay, oh my god, let's go to the freaking movies. Ha ha ha! Honestly, hanging out with me like this, you must have a death wish. Yep, a very cute death wish. Aww. Aww. I cut the rose. Uh oh, they went back to jam it up there. It, don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it, alright. On her dresser sits a brightly colored box tied with a cheery ribbon. From the ribbon sprouts a single red rose. Let's listen. God, I don't deserve to call myself your friend. Hey, your hands are so warm around mine. Shut up. I really, I really don't. It's just getting worse. And, and now, Marisol, it's literally not a big deal. It's okay. Why do you keep... I jerk my hands out of yours. Why are you telling me it's okay? You're the one who... who. And I finally fall to my knees, sobbing. You drop with me and I hate it. I hate being held with those arms. I hate that I'm not noble enough to push you away. I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself and you hold me anyway. Distantly, I'm aware of the vines making noises of retreat. They're retracting out of the room. The box has a label on it. Just one word. Alejandra. It's a book. It has a long title that I've never heard of before, but I love it already. And there's a card. You really shouldn't be reading this right now. Oh, wait, that's you. Wait, that's me. Yep. Well, in any case... 
Congratulations, Alex. I know you've been waiting to become a witch your entire life. For what it's worth, I've always considered you the best witch in the world. I'm sorry I couldn't give this to you the day it became official. I'm sorry I do so many things worth apologizing for. Alex, thank you so much for being my friend all these years. I really can't thank you enough. I really appreciate your friendship. I really love you. Alex, if I hadn't told you already, I want you to leave. If you're reading this, you're probably getting ready to come to the attic. Please don't. Please just take this gift and walk out of this house. Don't worry about me. Just focus on being a witch like you've always wanted. Alejandra, I've asked so much of you, but I promise this will be the last thing. Knowing you, you think you're obligated to come rescue me. It's very sweet. But you know you can't save me. Please, Alex, go live your life and forget about me. Don't leave. No. I'm gonna open the book. Open the book. Flip the front cover of the book open. Something small and silver is lying on the front page. Do we get the three keys found? Oh. Start walking towards the attic. Sprint towards the attic. It takes moments to work the door open, and I go up the stairs. She's taking so long. Can we really be sure she's okay up there? That's Betty's new voice. Okay, that's Betty's voice. I like it. She'll be fine. Trust me, she's the only person in this house who knows what she's doing. But what about Marisol? How can we be sure that thing hasn't hurt her? I can't believe this happens regularly. <laughs> How has she been able to survive this long with a monster constantly trying to... Betty. What? What? Why are you making that face? You do know there's no monster, right? Huh? The attic, as always, is surprisingly clean. Aside from the massive vines creeping across the walls, it could basically be called spotless. Her bed is by the window. As always, only her head moves to me. Oh. 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 I know this oh. is completely tangentially related. Is that a lunar tear? Close. Lunar tears are from near. In Dragonguard 3, the flower is not specified. I thought it was a missed opportunity that it wasn't a lunar tear. <laughs> but that's beside the point. <laughs> you really suck at following directions, Alex. <laughs> Good to see you too. I was hoping this time you might not come. I don't really know why I expected today to be any different. Well, we've got ourselves a nice little pattern going on, don't we? More like a rut. Same games, the same goofy lines. Hey, I've been pretty sparse with the goofy lines today. Good for you. Something about saving a princess, something about you being a brave knight, etc. And what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Nice girl? I don't think I've seen one today. So, how are you? Dying. <laughs> right. Let's get to it. So, the bathroom. Thought we were kind of past the fake body in the bathtub thing. Hey, don't ask me. The monster did that. Uh-huh. It seemed nostalgic. Since now you're the real deal and everything. Sort of a, <laughs> remember this thing? Like and share if you're a 90s kid. <laughs> 15 magic spells only 90s kids appreciate. 25 roses you pruned if you were a 90s kid. Only 90s kids remember the sheer terror of seemingly finding their best friend's corpse. Hey, complain to the monster if you don't like it. <laughs> Alex. No, that's you. Alex. It's a joke. I didn't mean... I think we both know that's bullshit, Mary. Clip. All day you've been trying to push me away, and now you're going to act like it was all some big goof? Well, obviously, you weren't listening to me. If you were just going to pretend that everything was A-OK, -okay, I didn't see a point in trying to... Sorry, you think I'm pretending everything is A-OK? -okay? Well, yeah. 
I don't know if you've noticed, Alex, but that's kind of your thing. Fine, let's talk. Why did you keep telling me to leave? You only ever used to do that while the whole... While doing the whole monster act. You never used your real voice. Why are you suddenly... Meryl, I'm the last person in the world who'd have to explain your own condition to you. If it didn't come up to... to if it didn't come up... If I didn't come up to do this, you would have died. Is that what you wanted? I mean, have you been listening to me the past six years? Alex, you've been the closest friend I've ever had. You know basically everything about me. You know I'm not getting any better. But you're not getting any worse. <laughs> Am I really? Every time I wake up, it feels harder to get out of bed. I feel less and less. I feel like I can't remember what kinds of things I used to like. I feel like I can't remember the last time I was happy. But do you know what the worst part is? I don't have a single reason to feel this way. I have a good life and a nice family. Nothing terrible ever happened to me. But out of nowhere, God, I can't even remember when it started. It just feels like one day my heart stopped beating. One day I woke up and I was a corpse. Alex, I'm so tired and I don't even know why. It all just feels so empty. I'm so empty except for the vines and the rose. You know, at night, sometimes when it's really, really quiet, I think I can hear it growing. Sometimes I just hear it making noises. And I'm pretty sure it's laughing. Most of the time, I feel like I'm just pretending to be a human being. But maybe I really am a monster. A monster, a corpse. That's me. Oh, what? That's you. Yep. But I needed a moment because the fucking real feels train just pulled into the <laughs> station. And I apparently have a ticket for both directions. <laughs> <sighs> a monster, a corpse, and a princess. You're building up quite the resume. Anyways, that takes care of everything. No more vines, no more roses. Are you sure? I think you missed a pretty big one. That joke stopped being funny years ago, you know. Who's joking? I'm not going to kill you, Marisol. Hmm. Then maybe I'll kill you. Oh? Yeah. Tell you what. If you don't pluck the rose out of my eye, I'll take these vines and crush your throat like a soda can. Come on, don't make it sound so appealing. What? You don't like autoerotic is fixed it. Oh. <laughs> Alex, don't... Don't talk like that. What? You were the one talking about strangling me. Yeah, as a... It was a joke. Yeah, obviously. I thought we were doing a bit. No, we're not... I'm not... God. Why do you always just go along with everything? I shouldn't be making jokes like this. You shouldn't just be okay with me making jokes like this. It's terrible. I'm terrible. You're not terrible, Mary. You're having a bad day. I've been there. I know what it's like. You know what it's like? You know what it's like? I... God. Alejandra, what the fuck do you know about having a bad day? You're perfect. Marisol, come on. You are so, so perfect, and beautiful, and witty, and talented, and... And you're a witch. You've barely just become a witch. You're amazing, and you have no idea what it's like being... Being this. Being a burden. Being this ugly, horrible thing. I'm barely even human. I'm a shitty little heap of failures in the shape of a person. If I'm not feeling utterly miserable, or feeling sorry for myself... 
I'm this horrible, irrational bitch, making life a living hell for everyone around me. I know what people say about me. I know what they think when they see me. I know my parents hate having to deal with me. And I don't even blame them. I hate living like this. I hate myself. And you, you just sit there and won't even let me end this. But you think you know what it's like? Mary. No, shut up. I'm so sick of this. And if you're not going to do it for me, if, if you won't do it for me, then at least just look the other way. Marisol, look at me. Just stop, okay? Stop acting like you have any idea what I'm going through. That's... your... You know, in retrospect, I always found it kind of funny that you never asked why I always covered my other eye. <laughs> I thought you were trying to be cool. <laughs> it's real? It's real. 100% genuine ocular rose... Ro rosacea. Christ alive. We've known each other for years, and I never... I never even... Well, I try to keep it under wraps. But you can't be... You're so... Normal. Am I? Mary, you were probably too busy ragging on yourself to notice, but I don't exactly miss well-adjusted myself. But you are. You're you're normal and happy. You tell jokes. Telling jokes means you're not sad, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, as a deflection? You think it's normal to be like, I'm so tired of everything and I want to alter die? Why do you always think I crack jokes when things go south? It's the only way I know how to handle it. I guess when I say it like that, it makes sense why you, that you think I'd always pretend everything's okay. Especially when I was too much of a coward to show you my rose. Sorry. Marisol, you're right about one thing. I don't know what it's like to be you. I've got a lot going on. I don't have mood swings like you and my vines aren't nearly as bad as yours, but everything we're saying right now, everything about feeling like a burden, about feeling like you couldn't remember what it was like being happy, feeling like you woke up dead one day, it's like you looked into my head and pulled it all out. A girl like you shouldn't want to die. And a girl like you shouldn't feel like you're committing a crime just by existing. But here we are. Here's the thing, Marisol. You swear up and down that you want to die and that you've been asking for me to kill you since the day we met. That doesn't change the fact that you've always, always left me a way to find you. Do you ever... Do you ever feel like me? Like there's no hope? Or you have no reason to look forward to waking up? Yeah. Then how do you... I find reasons. No matter how silly or small. It could be looking forward to mastering a new spell or drinking a rosada or... Marisol, would you ever consider being a witch? What? But I'm not... The only thing magical about me is... What, you don't think that counts? I can help you do your first spell. <laughs> Besides, it's fine. Mostly you just need to be real good with a pair of scissors. <laughs> Lots of notable wishes have had ocular rosaceae. Lella told me about them. I think she probably never brought it up with you because it's tough for someone who's not in a family like us to become quote-unquote official, but your family isn't anything to sneeze at either. Saying it's trying to become a witch isn't exactly a shabby reason to stay alive. In case you haven't noticed, witches are rad. I could do worse things with my time. Especially if it's kept you around this long. You know what? The worst I ever was when, was when I was about 13. Or wise. It's the first time I remember thinking about, without a shred of doubt, I want to die. You know what helped? My grandmother told me she knew about another person with my condition. A pretty girl my age. And she offered to introduce her to me. That day I knew I wasn't the only person in the world with... Or... I think it's O-R. OR. I can't even describe it. To feel like you're utterly completely alone and then you find someone like you. Someone like you who's pretty and smart and has this way of talking about the things she loves that just makes your blood feel electric. Someone who tells you about something she saw and makes you feel like you were there. Or someone who makes you look at the world in a new way. Marisol, becoming a certified witch was my long-term goal, but it was definitely not the only thing that's kept me around this long. Uh, but... <laughs> Let's take this one step at a time, eh? <laughs> I think becoming a witch would be really good for you and it might even be a good way to... 
direct excess negative energy from your flower. But it won't be an instant solution or to everything. I just want you to understand that. You won't be replaced with the perfect magic you. You won't stop having bad days. Yeah, I figured. You have to fight through them. Of course, I'll be here to help you. So can I ask you to do the same for me? I mean, you've always been that person for me, but uh, yeah. It always seemed irresponsible to consider you that way without... Alex. <laughs> Words. I'm just trying to say, can you help me through the bad days too, if it's not... Alex. You honestly thought you'd have to ask? It's the least I can do with all you've done for me. Besides... This is gay now. Us lovely corpses have got to stick together, you know? And title, title drop. drop. Yeah, I know. And scene. Maybe. No, badass long coat moment. So I really have to be getting, getting rid of these. And I'll tell my grandma about what we talked about. Maybe she'll even agree to be your sponsor. And uh, call me, you know, if you ever just want to vent or anything. Alejandra. Hmm? You can't save me, you know? Even if I become a witch, even if things get better, I'm always going to have this rose. I'm always eventually going to have days like today. And I'm always going to come on days like today. And I'm always going to come on days like today. You're going to get old walking up those stairs, you know. Yeah. I can't wait. Oh, ah! that was really good. Oh, I love it. I was super into everything oh, about that. Oh my gosh, that was such a great game. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for self shilling at us. Yeah, because <laughs> that, that was, was so fantastic. worth playing. I'm, I'm really happy. I'm so that. glad we played that. By which I mean emotionally devastated. Yeah, I mean, that's how you relatable. know. That's how yeah. you know it's a good game. Is that Fuck yeah. Yeah. So thank you all for joining us on this, I guess this is the third video that's going up on request week. But thank you all for being here. Yeah. We're going to go back to playing stupid shit now. Sniffing things. No, stop. You, you legit have me worried that at some point I'm going to look over there and you're just going to be like coming out of your leg or something. No, stop. No, don't. This, mm. God. Did I ever tell you about the time one of my friends literally stabbed himself with a katana? Yes, you did. Okay. So every time I see you doing that, I'm like, oh god, that's gonna go right inside her leg. You should probably be worried. I got myself really badly right in the palm with Ooh. a pair of scissors in elementary school. I had great ideas about putting holes in paper plates for crafts, but not so good ideas about where oh, you no. should put your hands when you do that. Oh no. What's impressive is that they were safety scissors. They probably were. <laughs> <laughs>